Good day students, welcome back to the third lesson. I'm going to look at joint G of that frame. They have drawn a piece of it out there. I've just taken joint G and I've just exploded it slightly. If you look at my arrows here, I've drawn it in, same color. Why? Because we know them. Okay, we know what AG is. And be very careful, AG is intention. So at the right end, I'm saying it again, I'm only concerned with the right end of AG. I'm only concerned with the lower end of FG. I'm only concerned with the lower end of GE. And I'm only concerned with the left hand end of GB. Okay. Therefore, if I go to the left hand A, the other side of A is looking like this. But I'm not concerned about that. The other side of A of FG is looking like it. I'm not concerned about that. So don't draw it in. You are going to confuse yourself. Okay. Right. So FG we know. It's tension pulling away from the joint um, and AG is also in tension pulling away from the joint. Okay, right GB, we, before we can start, we need to assume directions for our forces. Now, when forces are in a line like this, people there, okay, G has got to be in equilibrium. So which way do you think GB is going to go? I think it's going to go to the right. Okay, very, very seldom do you have these two forces acting in the same direction. If both these forces are going in the same direction, what does it mean? It means that this point here is moving to the left and it's not moving to the left. A frame is in equilibrium. So if you assume GB to be going to the right, most probably you're making a good a guess, a good estimate. GE, however, is the one that... We, we cannot be sure of, and I'm going to assume it to be in compression, so it's pushing toward the joint like that there. Okay, what's the next thing we do? We resolve all forces that's not horizontal or vertical, and it means this one, and it means that one again. Okay, right, I'm going to resolve them. Right, I have resolved them. Oops, take my colors away. Right, so that's 60 degrees and that's 60 degrees. So that's going to be FG cos 60. FG cos 60. And that's going to be FG sine 60. Right, that's 60 degrees over there, so that's going to be GE cos 60. And that's going to be GE sine 60, like so. Do we resolve that and that? No, we don't, because they're horizontal. So what's the next thing we do? We some verticals and with some horizontals. People just another, some of you might know if you want to, because we know what FG is. We know what FG is, we can actually write in a value there if we want. And what's FG equal to? FG is equal to 4.04, .04. so I can actually put in a value there. So it's 4, I'm sorry, 4.04 .04 times 60, 2.02, if you wanted to, and that's FG sound 60, so, no, I think I made a mistake, got the wrong one, my apologies, let me just take it out, FG is not 4.04, .04. FG is equal to 12.70, right, let's see, so it's 12.7 times cos 60, 6.35 and that will be 12.70 times sine 60 so it's 12.70 times sine 60 it is 
exactly 11 so I'm gonna write this as 11 okay you can either write that into the formula or write in the values because we know what it is right I am going to sum horizontals and sum verticals and let's do that right I normally start with the verticals first the sum of the verticals is equal to zero why is it equal to zero because the forces and the system is in equilibrium. How many vertical forces do we have acting? We've got that one, and we've got that one. So we've got plus Fg sine 60, which is 11, minus Ge sine 60, so we to zero, nice to be. Therefore, Ge is equal to, I'm going to write it to the right there, because I've got space there, so GE is equal to 11 divided by sine 16, and I get 12.70, it is, oh sorry, Right, there's the size of the force, and what does the plus mean, the positive answer, it means that our assumption that GE is in compression is in fact correct so it's in compression and at the top end over there it is pushing towards joint E okay right let me take it out because it confuses us right now I'm gonna solve horizontal to find GB the sum of the horizontals is equal to zero how many horizontals do we have acting minus 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 plus okay minus 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 plus we've got four horizontal forces it doesn't matter the order just take them all okay i'm going to go clockwise so it's minus a g minus 6.35 because i know the answer already minus g e cos 60 plus GB is equal to zero. Do we know what AG is? Yes, we do. AG is equal to 4.04. Um, do we know what GE is? Yes, we do. We just found it from there. So therefore, we can solve for GB. Let me just pause for a moment. Right, I hope you've done your calculation and you've got your answer before me. The answer is I get 16.74. 16.74 kilonewtons. Here's the size of the force. What does the plus sign mean? It means that our assumption that GB is in tension is in fact correct. Because at the other end here, it can be doing that there where B is sitting. Okay, so people, there we have went to join B. We solved for GE and GB, knowing FG and knowing AG from visiting the joints previously. We solved AG from this joint here, the joint at the end, a joint A, and we solved GF when we went to joint F. Okay, All right, people. So what you do is, if I let me just let me just go back and drop in my frame there again. Okay, just give me a second. Alright people, there's the frame, I've dropped it into view there. Now let's see what we got and what we need to do. Um, I'm going to make it red a bit so it looks better. Right. That's compression. That's compression. Tension. There's also tension there like so. We've just visited this joint G here, and we found that to be in compression, like so, and we found GB to be in tension. Right. We need to go to the next joint. Can we go to joint B? One, two, three unknowns. No, we can't go to joint B. Can we go to joint E? Joint E up there. 
that's unknown, so that's unknown, that's unknown. Yes, we can go to joint D because we know two and we don't know two. So that's the next joint we're going to go to. We go to E and, okay. Right, right, people, I'll stop there for the moment. You can, you can do the rest yourself, okay. Um, just a word of caution, when you get to joint B, when you get to joint B, okay, you're going to have that member, that member, that member, that member, those two will be known, those two won't be known, and don't forget to add your vertical force at B, which is sitting like that to the amount of 1.0 kilonewtons downwards. Okay, so when you get to joint B, you're going to know that force, you're going to know this force, because you've just gone to the joint, you're going to solve for BD, let me put T in here, you're going to solve for BC, and don't forget to put this down with the reaction force of 1 kilonewton, the force we found in the very beginning when we took moments about A to find that force. If you leave that force out, these two members are going to be wrong. Okay, people have fun, and I will see you in the next video.